everyone, so a couple of weeks ago, I made a video for you guys, which was 10 clever money saving hacks to save at least a thousand dollars. Now you could watch this video and use one of these ideas to save $1,000 or you could apply all of these ideas and save up to $10,000. Now this video is still going nuts and you're still watching it so I will link it in the video description box below. But in this video I actually had my first giveaway and for you guys to enter the competition all you needed to do was share with me what money saving or money hustling hacks you're doing in your own life to save money. Now I was blown away, I was motivated, I was inspired by all the clever things you guys are personally doing in your world, in your lives, to save money, to hustle money. I decided that 10 people had to win this competition. So make sure you go back to this video, check and see if I have commented on your um, uh, comment to me and you'll see whether you're one of the 10 people to win a signed copy of this book and of course the letter from me to you. Now, following on from your ideas, I wanted to share them back with you. So I've actually made you two videos following on from this video. Now, this video is 10 different ways to save $1,000 or more. And then next week, I am publishing a video for you, which is 10 different ways to earn or hustle $1,000 or more. So when you watch both of these videos, you can choose to save $1,000 or you can choose to save $10,000 and you can choose to earn $1,000 and you can choose to earn $10,000. The choice is yours. So let's get started firstly on 10 different ways to save $1,000 or more. And these are all your ideas, guys. So thank you so much. All right, idea number one is to buy secondhand kids toys from op shops. Now this idea I thought was so timely I actually went to the Salvation Army Tempe store and I was blown away by how many brand new kids toys were there. Toys that still had the tags on, toys that were still in the boxes. You could very easily go and pick up so many kids toys for a fraction of the price. And this is really interesting because Rocco is at a stage where he's often being invited to his friends' birthday parties, sometimes as many as three in one weekend. And having a present for every single party is incredibly expensive. But you could actually go and pick up some toys from these op shops or charity stores. Idea number two, and this was actually a very popular answer of what you guys are doing at home, and that is to save $5 notes. So whenever you have a $5 note, you can't spend it. You have to bring it home and put it in an envelope or in a tin or a box. Now this is very similar to the $2 thing that I'm doing with my water bottle here, which is getting heavier and heavier. I get so excited when I find a $2 coin. And this is a great idea because if you can do this three to four times every single week, there is another $1,000 by the end of the year ready for you. Idea number three is rounding up. Now there were two different variations of doing this. One was to use the Acorns or Raise app, which simply rounds up every time you spend money and that money goes into a separate account that can be invested. The other idea is to do this manually and this is actually what I do myself manually. So what you guys are doing is when you buy something, you simply round it up. So say you go and buy something for $66, you will round it up to say $70 and transfer that difference into your savings account. What I do personally is say I'm doing a grocery shop and it comes to $190, I will transfer $200 from my everyday cash savings account to my credit card. That means my credit card always has a little bit of surplus and throughout the year, if I do this all the time, there is a nice little bounty at the end of the year that I can use as I like. But this is very simple and a really great habit to employ throughout the year. Idea number five is around minimalism and I love this and that is embracing minimalism. So every time you say no to buying something, that money that you are going to spend, you transfer into a separate savings account where you can watch it grow and you can actually see and feel the impact of consuming less in your life. And as you see that money grow, it becomes incredibly inspiring and motivating to keep going. And you also get to enjoy the freedom and space that's, and the energy that's freed up by having less clutter in your life. I love this idea. Idea number six was gold. And this is something, again, I do myself personally. And that is to always, always, always keep your warranties. 
Now this is my warranty folder. Every time I buy something, I put the receipt and the warranty just in here. It takes just a couple of seconds and it means that all of my warranties are in the one central place. I don't need to like fumble through drawers and cupboards trying to find it really easy. Now this has personally saved me so much money because something has broken in my home and I thought, oh no, maybe they're gonna to have to pay for it to be serviced, which could be expensive or go and replace it. And a classic example was I had a vacuum cleaner that was just over one year old, but I checked my warranty when it broke and realized that the warranty was actually two years. Now, if I hadn't the warranty, I would have just assumed it was broken, thrown it out and bought a new one. But I was able to call up the vacuum company and they confirmed the warranty and they gave me an option of either getting a brand new vacuum cleaner or getting serviced. Now, as it turned out, the vacuum cleaner just needed to be serviced and it's working perfectly fine again. So not only did I save about $300, but I also didn't contribute to any more landfill, which feels really good. Idea number seven is really cool. And I have to admit, I haven't done this for a really long time, but need to do it again. And I used to do this when I was a student on a really, 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 really tight budget. And that is to use student clinics. There are so many universities and colleges and TAFEs that actually are looking for people where they can test out their services or skill sets on people. And it costs a fraction of the price. Now, where I live, there is a actually a, a beauty salon college and I can access massages, facials, manicures, pedicures, even I think spray tanning for a fraction of the price. There are amazing savings to be had and it means you don't have to forego all those self-love luxurious treatments by using student clinics. And it's a great opportunity for them to improve their skill set, improve their experience, and also you get to save some serious money along the way. Idea number eight was a really common one and that was to work from home one day per week. Now there's something really nice about working from home one day. You don't need to rush out the door. You don't need to catch the bus or train or sit in traffic. You can kind of take it a little bit easier. And there is something also really nurturing for the soul in working from home. Now, when you do this, you save money on transport and you also save money on food because you don't get tempted to go out and buy your lunch. You can actually force yourself to eat lunch at home, which can also be very good for the waistline. Idea number nine was very similar to that money saving chart that I put in my hacks video. And that is to save $1 on Monday, $2 on Tuesday, $3 on Wednesday, $4 on Thursday, $5 on Friday, $6 on Saturday, $7 on Sunday, and then start all over again. Now, if you can do this throughout the year and stick to it, you will save over $1,450. Now that's over $1,000, how good is that? And that might be perfect timing for say Christmas time when you need to go and buy some presents, which you could potentially buy some of them from an op shop. Idea number 10 is really cool and I'm actually gonna give you a double dipping trick with this. And that is to use websites such as Groupon where you can access certain products and services at a significant discount. Now, what I am doing is I'm double dipping on this. So I'm actually using my cash rewards affiliate membership program to earn commission every time I use a Groupon code. But also I have my notification button switched on on my cash reward account because often I've noticed they do special like incentives or rewards or bonuses when you buy things from Groupon. Things such as getting $10 off, you know, your first Groupon purchase or bigger um, percentage in commission, all sorts of different savings throughout the year. Now, what I've decided is every month, depending on how I go with my own personal life goals, I'm going to reward myself with getting a massage. And by using those Groupon codes um, or even using the student clinic near me, I can actually access, you know, a beautiful service full of self-love for myself to fill my, my bucket, as Rocco says, at a fraction of the price. So these are the savings that are really going to count. I want to give you one very important bit of advice to make your savings count. Saving money is really good and it's actually the sense of self-control and discipline that you get from saving money is really rewarding. But I want you to make sure that your savings actually count. There's no point saving money here but to then only um, mindlessly spend elsewhere. Every time you do something where it means saying no or cutting down or reducing, I want you to proactively transfer that money, just like I recommend in my $1,000 project book. You transfer that money into a separate savings account. 
That way you get to watch your savings grow. You get to see the impact of saying no. You get to make the, see the benefit of learning to compromise or to hold off on something that delayed gratification. And seeing your savings grow is, in, is intoxicating. It's incredibly motivating. So make sure all the things you do to save money count. Make those savings go into your separate savings account. And of course, nickname that savings account to remind you as to what that money's for, whether it be your own $1,000 project or the actual goal you're saving towards, such as a holiday or your deposit on your first home. It doesn't matter because it's your savings and you decide where it goes and what it's for. All right, everyone, thank you for watching. Make sure you switch on that notification button so you're ready to watch the next video next week, which is 10 different ways to earn or hustle $1,000 or more, remembering that you can use it to save or earn $1,000 or all the way up to $10,000. Choice is yours. See you next Monday. Ciao.